Oh. Oh. Man, it is hot. Ah. Yeah, hello. Is this Mr. Cool? Yeah, man, listen, I need I need some help here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so in this video, we're going to cover the install of this mini split system from Mr. Cool. It is a DIY system, meaning no HVAC professional has to come out to your house to help you out with the install. It comes with an easy to connect pre-charged line set. So you just hook up this guy, which goes outside to this guy, which goes inside, do a little bit of electrical work and you are up and running with heat and AC in your garage. Okay, so no more heat, humidity, and mosquitoes during summer months. And I'm super excited to get this installed. So let's get started with the unboxing. Okay, so this is the inside unit. It's pretty small, so this is awesome. So I'll go ahead and put it back in the box. Here's the wall template remote and instructions. So here's the line set. This is the pre-charged line set. Quick couplers or adjustable wrench only is needed. So that's pretty cool. Put that aside. Tube for the condensate. Here's a uh, the thing that plugs through the wall. Okay, so we'll leave it on this styrofoam pad for now. We'll just move it aside. Over here, we got a line set cover kit. Okay, so there's cover up to 12 feet of line on the exterior. And according to these instructions, this is paintable and I will paint it because my garage is brown and red. Okay, next up, got a little thermostat that we can hang on the wall. It's good with Alexa and Google Assistant, so that's awesome, I'm right from my phone. Got a nice Mr. Cool tool bag, two adjustable wrenches for the line set, and then we got a three and a half inch hole saw. Over here we got a little plastic pad in case I want to put it on the ground. I'm not sure if I want to hang it or put it on the ground, but we'll go over that when we go over the planning of the install. Okay, I want to talk for a minute about sizing of the unit. The unit I got is 18K BTU, and they make a 12, uh, 18, a 24, and I think a 36, and probably some others. But anyway, um, on their website they have some general sizing requirements. Um, for example, 12,000 unit is good for 500 square feet. Okay, I went slightly larger. Uh, this garage is about 480 square feet. Um, but the reason I went with a little more BTU for more cooling is because my garage has an open ceiling. Okay, so the rafters are like this, the ceilings like this. All the rafters, I would say 80% of it is insulated. However, that's a lot more uh, area or space to cool. Also, my walls are cinder block. The R value on cinder block is like one per inch of block thickness. Okay, so the walls aren't insulated that well. Also, the front garage door is wood. That is not insulated that well. The seals around the garage door aren't the best, so there's some leakage in this space. And most importantly is I'm not going to be running this AC 24-7. I'm going to flip it on an hour or two before I come out here. So I need a little more cooling to help speed things up. So that was my thought process in the 18K uh, sizing. Okay, and a huge thanks to Mr. Cool for sponsoring this video. If you want to see all the products, tools, parts, and whatnot, links will be in the video description and in the blog post in the upper right. Okay, so let me do a quick panoramic view of my garage. So you can see right there is the electrical panel. I have some free wall space right there. 
And then you can see I have the template taped up there because that's where I think I'm gonna put it. Okay, not much room above the window, no room there. And we don't have room anywhere else. So, obviously the easiest thing to do would be to put it right there, however, I'll show you why, because the condenser would be on the outside in a non-optimal space. So what I'm thinking is put the air handler inside unit right there. The line set will run down and across the outside and the condenser will go outside there. So we'll go outside and take a quick look. All right, so you know, here's the patio or whatever. I didn't wanna put the condenser right here because you'll see it and you'll hear it. But the electrical's right there, so that would be a very easy spot and the line set would just run straight down. Um, but what I'm gonna do here, okay, so back here, that piece of tape, that, that blue masking tape you see there is where the hole would be uh, where the template is placed inside. So that'd be the hole. I would have a vertical run of the line set and then it would transition to horizontal somewhere in this space here, all the way across. And then the condenser outside unit would go right here. Now I think I'm gonna put it on a wall bracket and it'll be mounted up like this. Um, a lot of water comes through here when it rains a lot. It's a little slightly sloped down. So I don't want, I don't want it to get wet. So. This is in a spot where you can't see it. It's on the side of the garage in between this small space here. Um, I think it'll do all right. And the line set, obviously I'll paint the plastic pieces to match this color. I'll probably repaint this whole uh, wall the same color just to freshen it up, redo the gutter, and uh, it should look pretty good. Okay, so I have the template up. This is the rough location where it's going to be, and it's dictated by where I put this hole, and I'll explain that in a second. Um, but per the instructions, I have more than the clearance required uh, to the top of the ceiling. I have more than enough clearance on the sides per the instructions and to the floor. So I meet all that criteria. Uh, now what I want to do with this hole here is if I take this guy down, this is cinder block, okay? And if you've ever looked down in an, a cinder block that's not installed, there's a web right here, in the middle, and at the end. So in here is hollow, and I wanna make it easy on myself, and I just wanna drill through a hollow section of the block, okay? And I've cored through this garage for electrical service in the past, so I know that this is hollow all the way through. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna put this guy right here and I'm just gonna trace around it. And the center is somewhere right there. Okay, next problem. I don't have a coring bit exactly three and a half inches. I think I have two and a half or two and five eighths um, I'm renting a hammer drill from a friend. I went to the home improvement store and I asked to see what sizes they have. They have like two and five eighths again, and then it jumps to four inch. So that doesn't do me any good. So um, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a bunch of small holes around the perimeter. Okay, and then I can bust this out with a demolition hammer. Okay, also I have a carbide blade for my Sawzall and I did a little Googling and those blades will cut through cinder block. Obviously it wears it out fast, but if I have some jagged edges, I can easily um, do that with the, with the bit. Okay, so that's the plan.
Well, I'm through, but man, I hit the web. I think this block actually has two webs. Um, but right here on the left here, I'm right up against another web. So unfortunately, I need to go through a web here, uh, which is fine. Um, at least I'm through one wall. I have a chisel tip on a hammer drill and I can just bust up that web. Um, but what I wanna try to do is poke a hole uh, through the other side here slightly down from this hole so I can get a little bit of a slope to the uh, to the pipes okay this piece of tape is here I marked the center of this hole and I went down slightly about half an inch and this is where I'm gonna poke a pilot hole through the other side well I'm eyeballing it at this point All right, I'm through the other side, so we'll go outside and punch the hole. Okay, so this hole saw went through that much cinder block, and it's it's still a little sharp. Obviously, this isn't the correct tool, but it works. Um, I have that wall, to, that rib to deal with. Um, let me show you what a proper bit looks like. This is a coring tool for a hammer drill, and this is specifically made for cinder block, concrete, brick, whatever. Unfortunately, I don't have three and a half inch called around no store has it these bits are 100 to 200 300 dollars depending on which one you buy so um i didn't buy one <laughs> so anyway um here's what a core bit looks like so now with that web um what i'm going to be doing is using this hammer drill in chisel mode and i have a chisel and I'm just going to pick away at that web until that uh, grommet fits. That's the plan. All right, so my camera won't go any higher, but you can see this is what I'm dealing with here. In order to get this guy in here, I'm just going to have to start chiseling away at that until I get a clear opening. So we'll see how quick that goes. That was actually much easier than I thought. The chisel made quick work of that. All right, what I'm gonna do now is use a sawzall with a carbide blade, and I'm just gonna put a little bevel on the back side of here so I can get the pipe to go down. Okay, so this sleeve is all the way through the wall. There's about half an inch protruding on the other side. So what we can do is trim it and then put that other cuff on the other side. Okay, so you can see I have the template here. I cut the hole out. I'm lining the hole up. And I have a level. So 
So that's pretty level right there. I'll uh, we'll fine tune it in a second. Okay, so here's the metal plate. Obviously, you'll be able to read the numbers. That's the way you want to put it, and the arrow's pointing up. And you want to just set it right on the outline of the template here. Let's drill going here. So what I'll do is I'll put one hole in, level it out with the other. These are the wall anchors supplied in the kit. Right, I'll drill my second hole, get it nice and level here. There we go. All right, so that's nice and level, and it's time to go ahead and mount the unit. Okay, so here we are at the unit. It's in the box. This is the top, and this is the bottom. What we need to do is bend this piping to over here. This is where it comes out the hole. Um, and we also need to um, orient these pipes in a certain manner, wrap it with tape before we hang it and feed it through the... Um, the wall. Okay, so let's go ahead and these are the refrigerant lines. Let's go ahead and nice and easy bend these. Okay, we got our con uh, this is for the condensate. Okay, so the refrigerant lines are right here. There's one here and one here. Got that. Here's the condensation. And then the signal wire goes up here. So that's how we're going to bundle it. All right, so let me get started here. Okay, I'm going to put a zip tie here just to make life a little, a little easier on me. Okay. Okay, I'm going to move my zip tie down here. Get a little tighter so that's all packaged nice all right we can lift this guy out of the box and carry it over there all right first things first take your signal wire and just feed it outside okay time to lift the unit and we will feed the cables through and just hook it on
what I'm doing. goes. Woo! Nice. Okay, so I had to take down all my half-inch conduit and upgrade to three-quarter conduit. Reason being is I upgraded the compressor wiring, and I also am adding three more wires for the AC unit. So the uh, per NEC code, the conduit fill uh, reached the limits of the half-inch conduit. So it required me to go to three-quarter. So I tore down all the half inch stuff. Here I am rebending three quarter conduit and just rerunning what I had. Okay, so um, bending conduit's actually pretty simple. Um, and if you screw up a stick, you know, it's a couple bucks for a new 10 foot stick of conduit. Um, but basically if you Google uh, conduit bending theory, uh, there's a lot of good resources for uh, on how to do it. Okay, so here's the electrical service that's going to poke through the cinder block. Uh, basically, what I found is some half inch nipples. So I got a six inch here, I got a two inch, a two inch, and I got a couple couplers. And basically, what I'm going to do is join a bunch of these together to get the correct length that pokes through the brick. So it turns out that this uh, stack here of parts works good. 
Now, one LB is going to point straight up and one is gonna point down. So what I'll probably do is put a paint line mark across here, meaning it faces up. And I'll assemble this and I will mix up a little mortar and pack the joint nice and tight and obviously paint it afterwards. So here's a small amount of mortar. You can buy a little 10 pound bag, uh, costs a couple bucks and I'll just uh, slop it in around that hole. Okay, so let's recap on the conduit run. You can see it coming out of the box up there. The three quarter runs along the top there. There's the air handler. Let me jump up there and show you what's going on over there. Okay, so once I get to this box, uh, the drop that goes down is still three quarter that goes to my compressor. There's the switch for that. And then over here, I transition to half inch EMT. And then you can see that's where it pokes out the wall. Okay, and goes to the condenser outside. Okay, I wanna talk about how I am gonna connect the electrical service outside. So this will be the LB that's poked outside of the garage. This is an LB. And what I will have on here is one of these guys here, which is a rain tight connector. There's a seal here and a compression fitting here. It'll be half inch EMT that will lead to this box, which is a disconnect. It's a non fusible, non fused disconnect. Okay, and how this works is right now it's in the on setting, so there's continuity in between the contacts here. And if there's ever a service technician or someone that needs to work on the outside unit, they, they pull this guy out, it kills the power to the unit, and to, to hide these contacts or to make them dead, per se, you could flip this and it goes into like a dead spot. And now you can see it's on off. Okay, and here's a ground lug. Okay, so... We will have half inch EMT going to these rain tight connectors and I will have a whip off of this, a liquid tight whip from here to the outside unit. Okay, here is the outside run. I'm just using half inch EMT from the elbow to the disconnect box using rain tight connectors and just uh, anchoring the disconnect box which is right above the unit. This will all be painted once I'm done. All right, so box is mounted here with two tap cons. Got my wet connector here, a little offset bend, 90. Got a clamp, LB. Um, I just got to repack that joint with mortar, and this is all uh, plumbed. And I'll just have my whip coming off of there, and uh, should be ready to pull wire now. Okay, so this 18K unit is a 220 unit. 220 volts. So that means we got to run two hots in a ground. I believe their 12K unit is a 120 volt ver version, but anything above that is a 220 volt version. Okay, so here's the wire that I'm using. It is 12 gauge THHN. This is yellow solid, black solid, and here I have green stranded. Uh, green is ground, and then we need two colors for hot. Doesn't matter what colors you use. Um, you just can't use green and white. Green's for ground, white's for neutral. So really you can use any other colors. I just happen to have yellow, hopefully that's enough, and I have black. So these will be my two hot conductors, line one, line two, and my ground. So we'll fish these three uh, with fish tape through the run. Okay, so I got a piece of half inch conduit here set up between two chairs. I got my three spools, this is for the Mr. Cool unit. This is for the compressor. Okay, so I have uh, six wires going into that three quarter EMT, and I got it all taped up and hooked up to my fish tape. A little bit of wire pull lube to make things go easier, and we'll just yank it through. All right, so here I am fishing some wires. Um, this job would totally go much easier with two people, one person. Uh, here at the panel, lubing up all the wires and making them uh, straight as possible. And then one person on the other end pulling on the fish tape. 
<laughs> I did this all by myself and I just had to go back and forth several times and uh, you know do it by myself but hey it worked out Okay, we need to make a whip for the outdoor unit from the disconnect to the unit. Um, this is a six foot liquid tight whip that you can buy. This is what it came with. These connectors and this guy with no wires um, at the big box store. Okay, so right here with the tape is where I marked it where how long it should be. So I got some cutters here and I will just cut that guy right here so we got two different ends here okay so these just get screwed in okay jam those ends on make sure they fully bottom out okay so here's my run of wires that I pulled a little extra and just snipped it. So what I'll do is I will run this through here. Okay, we're gonna want like six inches of extra on each side, and then we can go outside and hook this up. Okay guys, anytime you're working on anything electrical, you need to shut off the power. Okay, I got this panel loose, but anyway, you're gonna wanna shut the main breaker off, okay? And then when you remove this cover, there's still some live wires in there. So I'll, I'll show you a cool little tool to help you identify those. And obviously you have to stay away from it. Now, if you do not feel comfortable with any electrical work, hire it out, okay? Okay, so the only light I have on right now is the camera light. Okay, what I have here is this tool here, and it detects voltage just by touching this plastic tip to a wire. So watch this. So this is a sub-panel. These feeders are from the house, and these are still live. So obviously those contacts right there on that main breaker are still live. Okay, so you want to make note of that. However, this panel is dead, so these bus bars here are all dead and so with all the other, uh, all these breakers down here, okay? Okay, so what we have here is a brand new breaker. It's a two pole for 220 and it's a 20 amp rating, okay? I just happen to have a Siemens box here and how this works is you just hook it in over here and you snap it in and that's it, okay? First, let's take care of the green wire here. Um, my panel is a sub panel and the neutral and ground are not bonded okay so here is my ground bus bar okay um, you can see the whites go here the neutral so this is a neutral bar um, but anyway i'm going to take this guy here trim it and attach it to that this guy over here okay uh, please don't pay attention to these wires um, this is for my compressor I upgraded the wiring because I will upgrade to a larger compressor so I have extra length here um, so I can pull it in the box if I need to because that's all not 100% right now. So please uh, disregard these wires that are extra length here. It's connected properly but again I'm going to redo that later. All right, so my ground wire is in there and I'm just gonna cinch that down. Okay, next up is our yellow and black, which will go to the two breaker contacts. These are hot wires here.
Okay, yellow wire's hooked up. Let's do the black. And I like to 90 the wire like that to make it all clean looking. Okay, all the three wires are hooked up, two hots and a ground. Okay, make sure to pop out your metal tabs. Okay, the power's still off at this point. Okay, this breaker is still off, but let's go ahead and restore power to the main. All right, let's hook up our three lines coming from the main panel. The power is off, so we got our ground and two hots. And I removed this cover here from this disconnect. Um, let's go ahead and hook up the ground. That is the easiest thing to do. So right here is our ground lug, so we'll just have to strip back a little bit of this wiring. I'll actually probably trim it a little bit. Okay, so that's nice and tight. Now notice that there is line and load on each side. So uh, we're gonna hook these up to line. So we'll put the yellow here and the black here and it doesn't matter, just go ahead and Okay, and then this black one will go to the line here. Okay, so that's hooked up. Okay, now it's time for our whip. Pull some of the wire on the other end. Okay, we will strip this and put it in the bottom lug here. Okay, we'll take the black and put it to this load. Okay, that looks good. All right, and the yellow to the load. Okay, so we're all done there. Here's our disconnect this is in the off position right now but let's go ahead and put this cover on so this cover just hides everything we just worked on okay and when you're ready to power this thing up you just flip it to the on position and shove this guy in 
and then obviously turn on the breaker. But we got a little work to do by the unit here. Okay, go ahead and remove the cover on the unit and that exposes all the terminals. Make sure to pop out the little plastic caps so we can run our whip in there and also the cord that's going to run to the air handler. Uh, I'm going to be using a cord grip and it's basically a little compression fitting so you run your wires through there and install it in the knockout hole and then when you tighten the nut it compresses the rubber gasket and makes a nice tight seal uh, against the cord. So it helps to use a little bit of silicone spray and then you just work the wires through and install it in the knockout. Okay, it's really hard to screw up this wiring because they have it all labeled for you. Uh, the red wire goes to number one, the white wire goes to number two, and then the black wire goes to number three and it's all labeled for you. And then of course the green goes to ground. Okay, now it's time to hook up the whip. Uh, there's three wires. Um, the black will go to L1, the yellow will go to L2, and then the green will go to the green ground screw. Okay, once you're done, just make sure to uh, replace the cover with the screws provided. So here I am painting the line set guards, and what I'm laying down here is an adhesion primer, so it'll stick to the plastic. Um, the color of this is white so you can't really see anything going on but basically if you go to the paint store uh, and tell them what you're doing telling them you're painting plastic they will hook you up with some adhesion primer and then the correct paint to top coat it all right after the adhesion primer is done here is the top coat which is the same color as my garage so I can blend this line set guard um, to the color of the garage so that way you can barely see see this once it's all done. Next up time to uncoil the refrigerant lines. The easiest way to do this is to just uh, keep it on the ground put your foot on one end and just unroll it nice and slow. Okay it's time to hook up the lines and this is really hard to screw up because there's a larger diameter line which is the suction and then you got your smaller diameter and all you need is two adjustable wrenches to tighten up both ends of the lines and you tighten it until it bottoms out and until it's snug and you're done and here's a picture of what the finished product looks like Okay, here I am packing the collar with the neoprene uh, putty that they provide. And then of course I forgot to put the collar on so I had to slide it up the whole line set. But in any case, um, this piece goes on and it creates a seal. Here's the first piece of the line set that needs to get screwed to the garage. Working my way down with the line set guard, make sure this guy is nice and uh, vertical screw it in with some tap cons and then attach the condensate hose. So gently pushing down on the line set to make the curve, check and fitment with the top cover and packing it with more neoprene packing to create a really good seal so no air bugs and stuff gets in the garage. At this point we can attach the top cover, screw it in and uh, this area is done with the line set guard. So now it's a matter of making a 90 degree turn and doing the horizontal run for the line set. Here I am just slowly tweaking the line to make the horizontal transition. Well I ran out of line set guard I need to order another kit but in the meantime I am unrolling the refrigerant lines and there'll be some extra that will be tucked behind the unit but I'm just getting a rough run right now. Okay next up we can hook up the lines to the unit. Um, you want to orient the lines such that there's no stress on all the fittings. 
So here I am just tweaking it a little bit just to uh, make a nice generous bend and allow the threads to easily come together. And here I am just uh, attaching the line finger tight. On my model, the suction line or the big line goes on top and the smaller diameter on the bottom. So once you have the thread started, just go ahead and finish it off with two adjustable wrenches. And these fittings are made to completely bottom out and just uh, snug them up. They do have torque values in the instructions provided. So same procedure for the smaller bottom line. Go ahead and get the thread started and just tighten it up with an adjustable wrench. At this point we can remove the caps and open up the valves to allow refrigerant to enter the lines. Go ahead and spray soapy water on the fittings and check for leaks. Don't forget to check for leaks at the other end of the connection which is uh, where the unit or where the line set pokes out the wall. Okay, we're ready to power up our unit, so just flip this guy to on. Push it in there, good to go. Okay, all our electrical is hooked up. We got the disconnect on the on position outside. So now we can flip this breaker on and see if our unit will work. Okay, so we're ready to power this thing up for the first time. Got our breaker on, electrical's all good. We open the valve, let the refrigerant in. Um, so far, soapy water check, no leaks. We'll run it, check it for soapy or for leaks again, and uh, we should be done. So let's go ahead, hit the on button. There we go, it's working. So. Probably just wait a second or here or two here to make sure it cools and everything. The louver is swinging right now. Um, the fan's on auto. Let me uh, adjust the fan speed here. So that is low. This thing is insanely quiet so far. That's medium. So it's a little faster. And that's high. So I, I mean, obviously I can hear it, but man, this fan probably won't even come up in the video, which is awesome. So this thing is really quiet. Um, they also have a turbo mode, so let's see how loud that is. So that's turbo. Turn the turbo off. Yeah, it's nice and cold, man. That's awesome. Oh, man. That feels good. All right, so let's go ahead and hook up the little dongle. We'll get the app going so I can control it from my phone. I mean, that's really important to me. Um, but overall, it's working. Awesome. Okay, we're gonna be installing this controller so I can control this guy through my phone and anywhere in the world. Some instructions, and then you get a little dongle. All right, so to install this guy, you just flip this up. And all you do is plug it in right here. That's it. Done. Okay, I downloaded the Mr. Cool app. I registered it. You can see I labeled it as garage. It's green. It's talking to the unit. So I can just click on that. Power it up. Oh yeah, let's make it cold, man. Woo! There it goes. I just heard it kick on. Can change the position of the diverter, the speed. Um, awesome. So what's cool is I can do schedules. So I can, uh, you know, turn this thing on before I get out here. And that's the whole point, right? Cool it down, drop the humidity. So yeah, this is very cool. Okay, let's open this guy up. Okay, so we got to power this thing up through a wall adapter or through thermostat wiring. Um, I'm just going to power it up 
through the wall adapter since I don't have 24 volts available at the moment. Maybe I could hook it up to my garage heater thermostat wiring because that supplies 24 volts, but that's for another time. Uh, you can mount it on the wall or it comes with this little little kickstand here. Okay, just power this guy up. All right, so this guy's all set up. Okay, so my other line set guard kit came in to finish off the run here, so I'm just attaching more horizontal pieces so I can make my way to the unit. All right, after uh, triple checking for no leaks, it comes with these dampening pads that you wrap around the lines here. The kit comes with some three or four rolls of vinyl tape and what you do is you start at the unit and work your way towards the indoor unit and this way um, if any water gets on the line set it'll shed it off. So now it's time to uh, put some of the covers on and also it comes with clips and zip ties so you can attach the line set inside the guard set. And once you got that all attached put the covers on and should be good to go. All right, let's take a look at the install here. It's all done. Let me close this door really quick. All right, so we come out of the wall. Here's all the line set guards. And it runs over that way. Okay. And down here, what I did is I whittled away. What I did here is made a little opening, and there is the tube for the condensation drain. All right, so I turned the unit on. Let's go take a look at that. You can hear how quiet it is. So it's running right now, and I'm just talking normally, and it's really quiet. And then over here, I spray painted the electrical, so it cleans that up. Um, over here, you can see I use the one transition that is meant for poking out the wall but this one works best for my situation which does a 90 on the outside corner and then have just enough line set tucked back there and what I need to do is get some foam foam tape and clean this up a little bit better get some white foam tape and finish that off but yeah it's all done man Okay, well that's it for this video. I'll wait for a nice hot day and we'll do a little performance update on the unit. So stay tuned for that.